Well, we've come a long way with you know, since PSA was first introduced years ago. PSA, actually, you go back, it was uh, first uh, uh, studied in a group of men and women in the San Diego area, and reported by a guy named Jim Myrtle um, with Hybertech back then, uh, oh, way over a decade ago, almost two now. And um, in 840-some men and women, uh, it was kind of determined that what a value of PSA was that was abnormal, which was four. And so that sort of led to the PSA era. Uh, and since that time, we've tried to improve on PSA. We've had percent-free PSA, complex PSA, pro-PSA, clip PSA, this PSA, PSA density, and it goes on and on and on. Um, and, the, and then we add other things to it. We have PCA3, we've added to it. We've added to try to make the positive predictive value and the negative predictive value strong in screening. Uh, so, Phi actually is Beckman Coulter's new sort of drug, not drug, but uh, test that's been around that looks at uh, uh, something called Pro PSA, which is also known as Clip PSA. It's a small part of PSA. It looks at percent free PSA, it looks at a ratio, and you come up with a Phi score. And it, it looks very good at predicting initially prostate cancer. Uh, also predicting aggressiveness of the disease and outcome. Um, you know, the Phi score is not, it, you know, it's not, it's used mostly in men that have higher PSA. So if somebody comes in with a PSA of 0.5, we don't do a Phi score, generally you can, but that's not where it's looked at in men positive. So I, I would agree, I think it's pretty exciting. Um, it, I don't know if it's gonna replace PSA, I think it's gonna be something that's gonna replace both of them, but right now it is a very exciting new test.